everyone, it's Holly the Twister Sister. We are back again for another Tutorial Tuesday. This week I'm going to show you guys the cutest little peppermint sloth. All right, so sloths are still all the rage. I like to kind of go to Hobby Lobby sometime to gauge what is popular and in style. And uh, there's still a lot of sloths around with Christmas hats and all kinds of stuff on. So it'd be fun to have a sloth on your menu for the holidays, and this is the perfect one. Now, if you are into this sort of a thing, make sure that you're subscribed to my channel and that you press that little button to get notified when I put out new videos or sometimes YouTube might not tell you that there's a new video. And if you guys do end up liking this design today, it would mean the world to me if you would just give this video a thumbs up. So let's get into this. This is kind of gonna be a two for one video because first we're gonna learn how to make a candy cane and then we're gonna attach our sloth to the candy cane after that's done. So first things first, we gotta make a candy cane. If you've never done a balloon candy cane before, well, get ready, cause we're gonna do it today. You're gonna need two fully inflated 260s. I've got a white and a red, of course, but candy canes come in other colors, so play around with it. These are fully inflated pretty much all the way to the end, and then before you tie them off, just make sure to let a little bit of air squeak out so that your balloon are a little bit softer to work with. And then I'm gonna take the nozzles and we're just gonna tie both balloons together right from the start. Now, if you haven't seen my old princess wand video on how to spiral your balloons, um, you might wanna go check that out, but I will do a quick refresher here for the newbies and people that haven't been to my channel before. So the first thing I usually do when I'm about to spiral two balloons together is I line them up to see if they are the same size, <laughs> especially on a candy cane, you want them to start and end at the same place. So as you can see here, my white balloon is slightly shorter than my red balloon. Um, I think my white is actually a Qualitex and my red is a Vitalitex. So you're gonna have a little bit of different length and different sizes with the different brand balloons, but that is a-okay. Cause what we can do on this white, you can actually give this a little tiny bit of a stretch, just kind of stretch it out. And you'll see that that's gonna get us that much closer to our red and then being the same size. So I'm just gonna do that a little bit more. And now our white is actually a little bit longer than the red. <laughs> so I went a little over, but that is okay. Now, if you're just learning how to spiral balloons, there is no shame in using your knees to hold on to your balloons as you twist up the whole length of the balloon. Um, sometimes though, you don't wanna do that. So I'll show you how I do it with my hands. I'm just gonna start, I'm always leaving like the outside part of my palm touching the balloons as I work my way down this spiral. So leaving my palm, my outside part of my hands on, touching the balloons as I pull both balloons away from each other and then wrap them. Pull both balloons away from each other, wrap them. My hands are always on the balloons. I'm never like letting go. That'll give you a really loosey goosey spiral. If you want a nice tight spiral, always be having your hands on these balloons, pushing them together, pulling them apart, but still pushing them together with the outside edge of your hands here, if that makes sense, okay? So I'm gonna show you what that looks like in real speed. So you just kind of spiral all the way up, down the length of your balloon. And again, in slow motion, we're pulling them apart, wrapping, pulling them apart, wrapping, pulling them apart, wrapping, okay? And once you get to the end, we're gonna twist both balloons together just so that we make two small little balls on the end of our balloon here. All right, now if you're giving this to a child, you wanna make sure that those balls don't come undone. You can take one of them and kind of push it through the middle of your candy cane and back out the other side, and that will help to keep that end secure so it doesn't come untwisted. All right, so that is a really cool little straight peppermint candy cane stick. Now if you want to give it a peppermint or candy cane curve, like you usually see, like this, right? Um, one thing people do sometimes is they'll just get it kind of shaped how they want it, and you can start squeezing around the curved part of your balloon. 
and you'll see that that is going to give you some of that shape a little bit but it's going to be hard to get it fully where we want it so what i actually like to do is curve this much more than i want it to be at the end so we're kind of like making a ball out of this and then i squeeze around the edges like that just give it some good squeeze in not too tough you don't want to pop it right but this will give you more of that nice bend for your candy cane shape that you really want right um, if you if these tails sticking out here at the end bother you feel free to cut them off um, but what I would do if we were not going to go on to a sloth and I wanted to show this design because we do have clip art available for candy canes that you can put on your menu um, I do like to dress them up a little bit though so this is a little bit more special than just a two balloon figure I will take a green 260 and make a really quick bow so that's just going to be about a four to five inch twist and then two loop twist nice big loop twist and then I'm going to put a pinch twist right in the center of all that Oop, lost my bubble so just a big round bubble pull it out on itself make that into a pinch twist so we started with this one did our loops loops pinch twist and then I take my candy cane place this bow on the side of it bring that green balloon all the way around the candy cane and when you get it back to the bow you're going to twist it into the pinch twist on your bow and just line everything up so that both tails are facing down I like to open up the little curved parts of the bow to make it look cuter and then I would cut off the rest of this bubble over here to make it a little bit more even with this side. That is a really quick uh, candy cane that I do have clip art for. It's available for you guys um, on the store or if you're in the twister hood, you get all my clip art for free. So make sure to grab that and put it on your menus. Now let's make this into a really cute sloth peppermint candy cane because sloths are just so cool and they're still cool in the winter time. So we're just gonna take off our bow and we'll just be left with our candy cane here while well, I show you the sloth. And this is pretty much the same design as the sloth we did back in February for Valentine's Day sloth. Um, but he's still cool in the winter. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use a 350 for his face. I'm not sure if I did that last time. But you're just gonna put enough air in it for two bubbles for your sloth. And you wanna twist this in half and then tie both of your ends together. So this is gonna be the lighter colored part of his face and I'm using a blush 350 from Qualitex. And I just went ahead and cut off my tails there so we just have two bubbles tied together. Now I'm gonna take a gray 260 and I've inflated this with about a two inch tail at the end. And I'm gonna start off just by putting a small round bubble and making that a pinch twist. To start this guy off, we're gonna grab the face of our sloth and we're gonna wrap this balloon all the way around our 350 that we made so that your pinch twist would be in the middle. Mine came undone, but that's okay. I'm just going to re-twist it into a pinch twist. So that is gonna be what we've got for the face of our sloth so far. We're gonna come down for his body. We're gonna do a three bubble body so about three to four inch bubble here um when he comes down after this first one just go ahead and put his feet it's just easier to put him at this point that way you don't have to do a roll through all right we're gonna take our balloon back up into the pinch twist at the top of the head and then whatever you have left we're gonna bring it back down into the two loops at the bottom and what this little bit that you have left is going to be his little sloth tail. They don't have very long tails, so this is perfect. If you do end up with a really long tail, though, of course you can cut it off and uh, shorten that up. So you kind of see he's hanging like this. He just doesn't have his arms yet. We're going to grab another 260 and finish off his arms. For his hands to kind of get that hook-like claw hand, I don't put like a bubble or a loop or anything for his hands. I just do... A two inch bubble here and then a pinch twist okay we're gonna give his arm a little bit of a bend here for an elbow and we're gonna come in and twist this guy 
into the pinch twist we put at the back of his neck. Okay, so he's gonna be hanging out like this. And then at this point, we're gonna grab our candy cane. So we can see how big we need to make this back arm here that's going around the back. And then just twist that back into the little pinch twist by his hand. And you can cut off the rest of it so that you have about a one inch bubble left over to kind of be his other hooked over claw hand and get rid of the rest. So I'm gonna scoop my guy up here a little bit, get him all arranged properly. So this is kind of what we're looking like so far. Now I will say that the magic of the sloth balloon is in the artwork, so don't judge it yet. He's gonna be really cute. Um, since this is a holiday sloth, I do wanna dress him up a little bit. And so I'm gonna grab a green 160 to give him just a little bow tie, be super cute. So I'm just gonna fold my 160 over a little bit, grab the knot, and then pull that nozzle through the middle of my loop to make one side of his bow tie, do the same size loop on the other side. So we've got two loops. And then we're gonna do just a small brown bubble, pull that bubble out, twist it around itself to turn it into a pinch twist. You can try to open up the sides of your bow as much as you can here to add a little bit of cuteness there. And then we're gonna come out here and cut off our 160 so that we have a nice long tail that we can use to attach this right at his neck here. And that's gonna help hold his head steady and straight. And then we just take that tail around the back of the head, all the way around his neck, and then twist it back into the bow tie when you get back to there in the front. Okay, look how cute. If you have any extra tails like that, if it works, if you got tails taken out, it looks like you know the tails of a bow, leave it. If you just want, don't want them there, then cut them off. Okay, so this is our little sloth candy cane guy so far. Let's finish him off with the artwork. This is really what finishes this design. So you're gonna take a brown Sharpie and we're just gonna do two large ovals on either side of the face and then fill those in with your brown Sharpie. Now, if you don't have a brown Sharpie and you don't feel like running out and buying a new pack of Sharpies, um, you might have silver. Um, a lot of people play with silver Sharpies when they're starting with balloons and so that would work especially if you're using the gray for his fur um, Silver would also be cool. I'm not sure if they make like gray Sharpies I don't, I don't think I've ever seen that but try some different colors They do make Sharpies in all kinds of colors The next thing we're gonna do is just put two black circles inside of our brown ovals sort of towards the inside like middle part of the face and then just fill in those black circles with your black Sharpie like that. And then I'm going to add his eyebrows at this point and a nice brown button nose in the middle of his face. And then his sweet little happy face smile is really going to complete the expression on his face. But this design is really not complete without a white paint pen. Um, I like the Posca paint pens. Link is in the description if you want to get some. I think that they are um, probably my favorite that I've tried and also very reasonably priced. So I just put a big dot and a small dot in the black part of each eye. You can also put a little highlight mark on his nose makes it really cute to add like that little just a white little line on the side of his nose now you guys know if you've been watching me this year i'm really into getting some pink face paint and so we're going to put just a little bit of blush on either on his cheeks and it's just going to really sell this whole design with the cuteness factor 1000 I should name that, make that the name of my next series. Cuteness Factor 1000. And voila, there you have a cute little candy cane sloth. Isn't he adorable? His little blushy cheeks and the little whites on his eyes. I love this design so much. So there's two different ways you can do a candy cane. I always add the bow to it though. I just have to. 
Or if you have some extra time, maybe you're working in a restaurant or a low key party, um, maybe you want to sell these as centerpieces or deliverables, um, then this is a great way to jazz up your candy canes this year, put a sloth on them, uh, your customers are going to love it. So if you love this, make sure to show me some of that love by liking this video. And if you haven't subscribed already, you're going to want to make sure that you do that. So I put out new videos every single Tuesday for Tutorial Tuesday. And then I'll be going live tomorrow on my Facebook page. If you want to hang out live and ask me questions, I do that every Wednesday for Wednesday replay. Now you guys know I wouldn't leave you high and dry with this cute design and no way to tell people about it. So we've got clip art for the sloth candy cane as well. That is available at the website, Twister Herd Members. You get it for free. If you have no idea why I'm talking about clip art and balloons, because I really feel like working with a menu, having a menu displayed at your events of things that you are making at that event is the best way to make your parties go more smoothly, um, have people want to book you more, and it really helps please the parents and the children and you at your parties. I just love working with menus, and so if you've never tried working with a menu before, I do have a free menu that you can download and print off. Um, it's a basic level menu, so all very easy, simple stuff on there. And you can try that at your next event or line work event and see how you like working with menus. That's the free starter menu. <laughs> the link is in the description below this video. I know we are getting really close to the end of December. It went by so fast. But if you're still looking for more holiday designs, check out some of these other videos that I've got over here for you. All fun, new, cool Christmas designs. And I'll see you guys next week for another Tutorial Tuesday. Happy twisting, everyone. Bye-bye.